It is National Signing Day, the first National Signing Day here in December for a third consecutive year. Wisconsin ranks much higher than they're accustomed to. Usually Wisconsin does all its development in the offseason and then shows up much better during the season. But uh, with this class coming in, good things ahead for the Badgers, we would expect. We got Tyler Hunt on the line from Bucky's fifth quarter, SB Nation, to talk about Paul Chris uh, 2021 class. Tyler, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, so far today has been a really solid day for Wisconsin football. Um, I believe last I looked, I think they had 16 of the guys um, that they planned on signing signed. A few other ones um, are just waiting around on some other stuff. So they fully expect to have all 21 guys, all 21 of their commits signed today, which is uh, good. Wisconsin usually does a good job of getting these things buttoned up right away. Um, so it'll be nice to uh, to have that done. And, and for the most part, I think this class is, is pretty solid, and I think this will be all you'll see. There's a couple other guys that I don't think um, that have, they've got flyers out on right now that they're still talking to, but I think for the most part, this 20, 2021 class is all pretty much buttoned up. Tyler, I'm going to check you on solid because Wisconsin usually brings in a solid class. And then uh, I don't think Wisconsin fans really, really are bothered by the 35th or 40th best class in the country because we know we're going to coach them up. And when we see these kids come on the field as juniors, they're going to be ready to roll and contend for a Big Ten championship. But 16th in the country, according to the 247 Sports Composite, number three in the Big Ten and ESPN has Wisconsin at Number two in the Big Ten. We we don't see that out of Wisconsin typically. Yeah, no, it's it's another uh, record breaking class for Wisconsin, which is nice to see. I mean, uh, last year they were twenty sixth, and that was a record for them, up from twenty nine the year before. So to jump ten spots and break a record is pretty remarkable. And I think it just talks to um, the overall depth and, and just strength of this class. You're seeing Wisconsin football right now playing a lot of the guys from these last two classes, which were their highest two. I mean, you're talking about Graham Mertz. He was two years ago. Next year, you'll have Logan Brown, who was a five-star. He'll be your, probably your starting left tackle. So some of these guys in, in this class in the, 2020, or the 2019 and 2020 class are jumping ahead of guys from those other recruiting classes that just didn't pan out. I mean, Chimray DK is a guy from the 2020 class that is jumping up. So it's, it's big for Wisconsin because they do really well in development, but now all of a sudden you're getting players that, uh, at least according to rankings, and I, and I, I think these rankings are very important and, and trustworthy. Um, so you're seeing guys that uh, will probably make an impact earlier and then hopefully have bigger impacts, which would hopefully elevate Wisconsin from you know a New Year's Six Bowl to, to maybe a program that can contend with Ohio State in, in that college football playoff. I know they're the ones you're chasing at pretty much every time, but it starts with the recruiting and it starts with getting, you know, top 15, 25 classes, you know, consistently, which hopefully Wisconsin can do next year because their 2022 class looks pretty solid as well. So it'll be nice to, to see if they can, I don't know if they'll break a record again, but uh, fingers crossed. Talking Wisconsin National Signing Day here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please like the video. That's very important. Share the videos on social media. Not everybody knows that we're here talking college football every day. So share the videos out there on social media and subscribe. Hit that bell for the notifications. We go live every day. One five-star, five four-stars among the 21 commits, 15 in the three-star category. So run down the guys that are the headliners and then maybe a couple guys that might be down the list that you really like. Yeah, for sure. So the headliner is, of course, uh, Nolan Rucci. Uh, he's the five-star uh, offensive lineman from Warwick, Pennsylvania, heavily recruited by the likes. It was kind of coming down to Wisconsin, Penn State, and Clemson, of course. Uh, Hayden, his brother, is a tight end here at Wisconsin. So I think uh, him and Graham Mertz were very much in Nolan's ear. Um, we had him on our podcast a couple months ago, and he was very excited about uh, being a Badger um, he, he looks a little bit younger than he is, but he's a very mature kid. Um, I think he's going to be a great player for Wisconsin. Um, and, and really that was the bread and butter that they went after was, was Rucci and then two other guys on the offensive line, uh, JP Benchwall. Um, you might recognize that name. Both his brothers played at Wisconsin. He's a four-star tackle. And then Riley Malman, um, a four-star offensive tackle as well. Number one player in the state of Minnesota. So, uh, poaching guys out from you know the heart of Penn State and the heart of Minnesota to headline your class is is huge to go along with um, you know Logan Brown who's in the 2019 class and then last year they signed two really strong tackles in Jack Nelson and Trey Weddick so 
for Wisconsin, I know they do a good job on the offensive line, but you're, you're looking at a couple of years, you might have four and five star guys on the line that, that might be competing for playing time, which is not something you're used to seeing for Wisconsin. So uh, after that, they, they did get a few guys um, that are really strong on the defensive side of the ball as well. TJ Bowlers is a four star kid out of the uh, Iowa, Tiffin, Iowa area. So he was coming um, to Wisconsin after deciding between a couple different schools, Iowa among them. So not only are they winning on some of these players, but they're winning against, you know, your Big Ten team. So he's going to be a really solid player. Could be a guy that lines up in your, you know, with Jim Leonard's 3-4 defense more as an outside linebacker versus a defensive end. But uh, they'll just have to wait and see. And then and then really the two big ones uh, outside of that that I really like are overall, I think the most athletic kid is Hunter Waller. Um, he's the in-state kid from Wisconsin, going to play safety. Um it reminds me a lot of Jim Leonard uh, back in the day. Um, just a really solid player. Um, Going to come in and, and do everything that you ask of him. And, and then um, uh, Braylon Allen is another one in-state kid. Actually reclassified. He was part of this strong 2022 class. He reclassified to 2021 to be a part of this group. So that gave them a nice boost. Could be a hybrid guy, safety, outside, inside linebacker. Just a freak strong athlete for only being 16, 17 years old. So those are a lot of the the core guys, but Wisconsin also you know went after they they took a player from pretty much every position, so it was a good class that to give you some depth and and give you a lot of solid players across the board. So it's pretty nice. Tyler, is there any way to explain a program that has this solid of an identity, is very comfortable with what they do, developing players again, not bringing in the best classes in the country, but then developing them into top ten to fifteen teams in the country, battling for Big Ten championships, and then suddenly saying we're going to take this model, but we're going to bring in more talent and, and raising the level of talent that they're able to bring in, like you said, a better class than ever in 2020. And then they trump that in 2021. Yeah, it's it's exciting for Wisconsin fans. I know this year pandemic and just a struggle on the field has been rough to watch. But this is this is you know today is the reason why as a Wisconsin, you know, insider, quote unquote, that I, I don't really worry too much is because they are getting better in recruiting and, and they're seeing dividends from that already. I know Graham Mertz has had an up and down year, um, but they're developing some younger guys and getting them on the field earlier than they ever thought they would. Um, Chimray DK is a guy that is is playing early and going to be impactful for three, four years. So um, I, I think Wisconsin's got a really good model for them. I'm excited to see how it goes you know, forward here. Um, but three straight strong recruiting classes should pay dividends in the long haul. And, and I think despite the struggles you're seeing with uh, a team that's struggling to move the ball right now and score, I think this struggle will uh, will be short-lived and you'll see some strong football from them for years to come because these classes just seem to get better and better um, as the years goes on. We didn't necessarily think there was going to be a fight for Paul Bunyan's axe in uh, 2020, but uh, we still have a game as of right now scheduled for 4 o'clock Eastern time on the Big Ten Network with Minnesota. Do you expect that to be... I don't want to call it a glorified scrimmage, but in regards to shuttling players in and out, getting some young players some time versus uh, let's fight to the death. We got to maintain this. Uh, what is it? 15 out of 16 year dominance of this uh, rivalry and keep it home. Or, um, you know, how do you expect that game to be played in the approach? Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think Wisconsin will still play. Uh, of course, unfortunately for the Badgers, a uh, young guy that they like to have, have has been their best player, in my opinion, and Jalen Berger is going to probably be out again this week. He was not on the depth chart that we received. Um, so that's tough because he was averaging six yards a carry. He looks like the next Wisconsin running back, you know, the same, you know, out of that same New Jersey area that Jonathan Taylor came from. It seems like Wisconsin just hammers that pipeline in recruiting and, and does a good job. So he's going to be out. Um, I would, Merch will play, I would guess. I don't expect to see Jack Cohn. So you're going to keep your younger guys in there. Chimray DK will be in there. Um, last week, uh, actually, uh, an underrated receiver in my eyes got his, got into the fold of Devin Chandler. So I think you'll see him in there as Danny Davis and Kendrick Pryor are listed on the depth chart this week, but they were listed a couple weeks ago as well and didn't play. So I think you're probably going to be without probably two or three of your top offensive weapons. So I think for Wisconsin fans, you just got to treat this kind of as a, a scrimmage against your biggest rival. I know you want to win the game, but it's a pandemic. If there's a, week, a year to be down and, and just kind of doing this and practicing and playing some younger guys, this is the year. So um, I, I guess for me, I'm just going to watch the young guys and get excited about it and uh, and see what happens with the scoreboard. I think that's the approach that uh, the Wisconsin fans and, and the coaching staff will probably take. 
Bad news for the Big Ten West. Uh, Wisconsin is bringing in more talent than ever. And yes, Northwestern, I know that you've won the championship two of the last three years. Our, our respect to Pat Fitzgerald and what the Wildcats are doing. But certainly Wisconsin's been the, the, the team that has ruled uh, the division. We ran some numbers this week. A seventh best record in the playoff era nationally. Some people might be surprised by that. Wisconsin football looking better than ever with uh, talent coming into the program. Tyler Hunt, Bucky's fifth quarter. Catch him and the rest of the staff there covering uh, Wisconsin athletics there on SB Nation. Tyler, we appreciate you uh, kicking off a national signing day for us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.